Ken Kelsch, ASC. Uh, welcome back and welcome to uh, the Ken Show 5. So today I would like to discontinue our Let's Keep It Sharp uh, series and let's talk about Let's Make It Soft and some other stuff. Now you might uh, wonder why I'm sort of switching my direction, but I'm really not. What I'm going to try to express to you is that we are not those of us who make, make narrative films, although you know I like to do my documentaries too, but those of us who want to create a world of fantasy, we want to sometimes help our actors and actresses out. We do this by lighting with soft sources sometimes to make our actresses look uh, more appealing. We uh, do this also by adding filtration. So um, we're still going to have our dedicated monitor and our dedicated focus puller. But uh, what's different in this camera setup now is the addition of a matte box. And this is a Genesis matte box. It's a, it's a four by five uh, matte box. I researched a lot. I like I like this uh, configuration. I like these map boxes. They come in uh, two flavors. This one rides the rails of the my uh, my Zacuto rails uh, on this little rig that I have set up. And there's another uh, there's another configuration which is is this configuration, which is the clip on. And um, the clip on. Uh, I used its big brother a lot when I'm handheld with a Panavision or Aeroflex or whatever. Uh, this there's a little, there's a couple problems. Uh, on its cine lenses, the lens is, the front menisc uh, meniscus lens is fixed. It doesn't go back and forth. The lens travel is within the barrel of the lens itself. When you're playing with a uh, uh, DSLR lens, you will, the, the, the lens excel will actually extend. So you want to give yourself, uh, uh, if you're using this type of affair, which rides on the rails, you want to give yourself enough travel, enough space. Uh, now, why am I using this map box? You know, I have that little uh, comes with the package lens shade. Well, uh, the most important thing is you want to keep the front element of the film. I'm sorry. You want to keep the front element of the, the lens. You want to keep that in deep shade. Why? You want to prevent flare. You know, unless you're making an easy rider, then you get the uh, Vilma Sigmund... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, lens flare, but, um, here you, it's a twofold process. Uh, you want to keep the, 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 the front element of the lens in, in shade, but you also, you want to add something to it. Now, uh, I have, oh my goodness. I have, uh, this is a small amount of the filtrations that I have, and I, I have personal filtration uh, which I only use uh, with when I either budget is too low, and then I have to be careful because I don't want these things scratched up. They're 100 and change a piece, and uh, you know they're in the Panavision configuration. Uh, I have two Aeroflex cameras, uh, and one takes. I have a ton of filters for my 16 camera, but that's three by three. Uh, the current flavor of the month seems to be four by four. It's great. Buy your, buy your filters, whatever. Um, this one is it, it accommodates all the Panavision films filters that I had. And Ari takes the same four and a half by five. Uh, I don't really use a lot of filters, but w when I do use them, I try to make it look almost natural. When you start adding. Uh, behind the lens stuff uh, for flare. I mean, you can do nets and all that good stuff in front of the, uh, you can stretch that on the front of the, uh, of the matte box if you'd like. Uh, but for me, I'm a big favor of Tiffin. Mean, Tiffin to me is sort of the direction I always went uh, to. It's funny that Tiffin has become such a, a, a huge thing now. I, I, I think they have an association with Genesis. Uh, they have an association with this uh, this uh, Pro Elite uh, uh, 5075 head, uh, and um, you know the, I guess they they're now uh, the Steadicam distributors and the Merlin, which I'm actually considering taking a look at. We'll see how that flies. But uh, Tiffin filters, 
I sort of evolved from Harrison and Harrison. And Har uh, I used to like the, the single and double fogs. They were great. They did a lot of, a lot of great stuff. Uh, I'm a real big fan of the Pro Mist. And uh, if you look at any of my features, go to IMDb, Ken Kells, you can see uh, you know any of the 35 features. Uh, the three, four TV shows that I, I shot, uh, we were using, we would always use like an eighth or a quarter Pro Mist on the actresses because we want to be friendly to them. We want them to be happy. I like my ring light, which I have, and I actually got a bracket so that the ring light will fit on uh, the front of my DSLR. It's funny putting a $4,000 light uh, you know, on a $4,000 camera setup, but, you know, it could work. Uh, the ring light is another great device for softening the creases, uh, you know, this whole uh, labial uh, nasal line that's so predominant in people. And also, uh, when you get close-ups, there's the lattice from uh, actors that smoke, the little uh, little wrinkle. It's it's You want to help relieve that. You want, to, you want your actors to be confident that you can deliver. So um, here you have, uh, uh, besides the fact that not only is it necessary, efficient, it rotates. So if you want to use polarizers, great way to, by the way, to uh, bring, bring out the sky and also, uh, you know, to keep, cut reflections on the water and cars. This also orients itself. So that's great. Um, the other deal is that you can stack filters in this, which is good too. Uh, the Pro Mist fits there. You keep that in shade. If if you have a diffusion filter or a low con filter, and, and Tiffin, by the way, won the Academy Award for their uh, their low con series, uh, their ultra cons. I, I use them for night exteriors in almost every feature and almost every TV show I've ever done. So um, I think that uh, uh, Tiffin's delivering and delivers well. And I think that it's, it's relatively... Uh, inexpensive. You need to have this stuff. I really haven't uh, journeyed uh, uh, down uh, the dedicated DSLR filters because I have thousands of dollars invested in, in pieces of glass. But I, I'm going to start doing it. I think maybe the Ken, an upcoming Ken show will be me playing around with the different uh, filter effects on people. So you here's pretty much what you need to go out and do your DSLR narrative. You've got the camera. Uh, your your Canon. You've got all your cards. Uh, uh, I, I love the the 64 uh, gig cards now that you can record forever. Uh, very expensive, but you know who wants to stop? I've got my dedicated monitor. I, I've got uh, my viewfinder, my uh, which which is a godsend, and I have um, my uh, matte box. Now I don't. Don't don't discount the cool factor. If you, especially when I rigged this on the Scorpion rig, this Kudo Scorpion rig, uh, it looks it doesn't look like DSLR. You've now sort of taken it out of uh, the DSLR realm and you've elevated the whole thing because you got all this cool stuff hanging all over it. And you know it may be BS, but I don't think so. I think when your client sees the matte box, the EVF, the uh, follow focus device the dedicated uh, monitor, maybe another monitor, putting on your Dana Dolly so you're sliding left and right. I think that you really give uh, uh, yourself a boost uh, and your, your, your people that you're working for see you as some a technician who's bringing a lot to the picnic. So um, don't discount, don't discount uh, this whole uh, deal with, pres with presentation. Now, it works in a restaurant, so why shouldn't it work for you?